So, dear friends, one more case in our bone club. Ewing, Lang Ewing like uh, adamantinoma. And to talk about Ewing like adamantinoma, I would like to say a couple of words about classic adamantinoma. It is a tumor which is uh, mostly was mostly described for the tibial bone. This is a tumor which, as a rule, develops or appears in a, a long bone diaphysis. It is distributed along the bone, uh, spreading the uh, cortical plate. This is the way it looks on the section. And also, uh, it might have multicentric growth. And the main differential diagnosis list is osteofibrotic dysplasia, fibrotic dysplasia, and sometimes uh, metastatic uh, lesion. But mostly, it is a connection of osteofibrotic, fibrotic uh, dysplasias, and the mantinoma. Uh, these are main uh, points you should remember about. Uh, the mantinoma might look uh, in absolutely diverse way. It lo might look like spindle cell sarcoma, or it might look like metastasis. So they differentiated the mantinoma sometimes. They call it uh, as a bone cancer. And sometimes it forms such chains uh, and uh, looks like a metastatic epithelial tumor. Sometimes it forms such squamous cell structures uh, or, uh, 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 or s it's quite typical for that. And uh, lots of studies were done uh, with uh, electronic microscopy. Uh, 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 so today it's quite uh, popular to use immunohistochemical method. Electron, uh, electron microscopy, we forgot it. Uh, and it's not good because actually it's a well fixed tissue as it is. Uh, and uh, it's uh, quite interesting to study it. So, how we uh, decided, uh, how it was decided to create such a diagnosis uh, like Young, like Adamantinoba. For the first time, I saw this case at the New York uh, Bone Club, and there is one issue I would like to discuss specifically. Well, uh, first, it was mentioned in 1980, 20 year, uh, 29 year old uh, patient with lytic lesion in the uh, proximal uh, radius. Uh, differential diag uh, diagnosis, uh, giant cell tumor, chondroblastoma, and clear cell chondrosarcoma. And, uh, and uh, under microscopy, you can see that it's a tumor of the chains of small nests of uh, small cells. It doesn't look like anything else. And such small cell structure, as a result, formed uh, this uh, differential diagnosis list, adamantinoma. Uh, on the other side could be metastasis, like uh, kidney metastasis, uh, kidney tumor metastasis, or metastasis for, from uh, some endocrine structure. Such, uh, such alterations already have been described in uh, other publications. And then what I would like to uh, draw attention to, uh, that in 1980, it was uh, the number of cases uh, uh, that was, so to say, three-digit number. Uh, the year 2000, it was a four-digit number. So it is, it is a description of the same patient in 20 years at the same New York Bone Club. So it just a reminder how this tumor looked like initially. And you see how it looks in 20 years. And you can see that this tumor in 1981, when it was removed, when the fragment uh, was removed, uh, fragment of radius was removed, and how it looked under a microscope. And here you see how it looked in 20 years. And you can see that its histology is similar. Again, it is a chain of small cells separated with thin, quite delicate connective tissue septa. 
diagnosis of the bone club was late recurrence of Ewing's like endometinoma. And uh, after uh, hearing about such a case, when in our clinic such situation uh, actually emerged, I thought about this case. Uh, and uh, you see here electron micrographs. We did also electron micro, uh, microscopy. So here we have our patient, 39-year-old woman, who for many years, for seven actual years, uh, complained on some uh, discomfort and and quite, so to say, unclear symptoms in the low sort of her cough. During the last six years, the symptoms uh, started to aggravate, uh, pain and some edema uh, added, and uh, on x-ray they found the tumor at the distal part of her tibia with a soft tissue component with a sign, uh, with a myxoid sign in the tumor matrix. You could see here T2 uh, images and T2 images with fat suppression and also T1 images, T1 weighted images. You see axial sections T1 uh, and a bright signal at T2 and T2 with, uh, again with fat suppression. Uh, you see a clear tumor lesion destroying cortex, uh, uh, not significant soft tissue component with myxoid component in the matrix. Histology. It's uh, core biopsy. You see destroyed pre existing uh, bo lamellar bones, and you see fields of small cells, hyperchromatic with round nuclei uh, delineated, separated with a delicate soft tissue septa uh, and with uh, high magnification, uh, magnification you see fibrosis. Uh, for, so tumor cells are within that fibrosis, uh, not significant crush phenomenon. And if you look quite uh, attentively at large uh, uh, magnifications and those chains, and we look at those chains of small cells and those uh, delicate connective tissue septa, you see some similarities with the case which was described, uh, which was presented uh, at uh, New York Bone Club. The tumor is kind of a monotonous, cells are similar, similar type. Uh, the microscopy with uh, markers with antibodies uh, showed uh, significant positive expression uh, on uh, reaction with a cytokeratin cocktail with various cytokeratins. It's not quite clear why CD138 is positive in this case. It's not quite clear to me. And any one also was uh, partially expressed, partially on nuclei, partially uh, in uh, tumor cell cytoplasm. It was expressed as well. So, suggested diagnosis, uh, Ewing like adenocarcinoma. So, patient initially underwent replacement surgery, uh, replacing the defect with uh, during open biopsy with bone, it was replaced with uh, uh, bone cement. Uh, there was infection uh, complications, and uh, she was suggested uh, to have a. Uh, it was suggested to use as intermediate intermediate stage uh, to install the spacer. You see here her side view, and then an individual. Uh, implant prosthesis was uh, produced and installed without any complications. So currently uh, the long-term follow-up, uh, 22, so it's 22 months past without the signs of a relapse or continuing uh, growth. So what we would like to what we'd like to stress, what you'll focus on as a result of this um, of this presentation. When we talk about mentinoma, we should remember that, it, uh, first of all, we should think about tibia, but it might be femoral bone or radius or ulnar bone, but mostly we're talking about the long bones. 
uh, this for this tumor is typical to have epithelial component. It might look in absolutely diverse a different way it has uh, it it has billions of so to say faces but this uh, typical component a typical uh, reaction on cytokeratin swarm antinome is very important sign uh, we should dif do differential diagnosis for fibrotic fibrosis dysplasia and, and uh, acute fibrosis dysplasia and under antinome might have two ways of development it might either move to the benign uh, masses and uh, or to the malignant uh, masses, then it turns to be into a dead differentiated tumor, and, some t and then it could be called as a bone cancer. And of course, it should be differentiated from metastasis. So briefly, that's it. I think this case that this case is extremely interesting. But I would like specifically to stress that in our bone club, this is case number 50, and in a New York bone club by 1980 it was a three digit number by the year 2000 it was four digit number currently uh, the number of cases uh, uh, reaches 3000 so we have some work to do ahead of us